our sermon this morning is going to be on how God spare his children. How God spare his children. Our verse is going to be on Malak 317. Malak 317, which says, And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I'll spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Swahili? Swahili nasema. Nao watakuwa wangu, asema bwana wa majeshi. Katika siku ile nifanyayo nao. Watakuwa hazina yangu hasa. Nami nitawaachiria kama vile mtu amwaachiriavo mwanawe mwenyewe amtumikiaye. Yes. These words are a part of the promise which God make to them that fear him or to those who are good in evil times. You see, as the children of God, uh, you will find that in this world we are living amidst evil. There are many things that affect the world <coughs> and these things they also affect the children of God. And here God is giving us or is encouraging his people or his children during the times of calamities or because of what they undergo in this world of evil. He is telling them or he is telling us that I'll spare them. You are going to be spared. No matter what you go through, God will spare you if truly you stand in his commandment. So here we are going to see uh, how God spare or how God can spare you in the time of calamity. And you might be evil also, or you might be uh, among those who are not doing in accordance with the will of God. And that's why if you go a little bit to the same Malak and you read it from 15, you will see that 15 says, and now we call the proud happy. Yeah, they that work wickedness are set up. Yeah, they that tempt God are even delivered. You see now, that means we are children of God. Or there are many children of God that are proud like the worldly people. They they want, they are after this material world like the worldly people. That's why God here is saying, they that work wickedness are set up. Yeah, they that tempt God are even delivered. 16 December, then they that feared the Lord speak often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Which means, even if there, there is misery in this world and his children are there, and some of them, you cannot even recognize them because they are taken up by this world 
And they don't even know themselves. But God is saying, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. These people that are the, that are the children of God, that feared the Lord, and thought upon his name. This means sometimes you might be taken by this world, but your name is written where? In the book of life. You are a child of God. So, no matter which situation you are, no matter how much you are taken up in this world, there is, also, there is always a spirit of God in you. A spirit that fear the Lord. The Lord will remember that. He will see you. He will know you. And he will spare you. Those are the things that we want to see. Because this, this is encouragement to the children of God. Here, God wants to teach us that a faulty child is a child still. And therefore, not so easy turned out of the family as a servant. Do you know what I mean? Hata kana kwamba yeye anafanya makosa fulani ambaye haikufurahishi. Haiwezi kuwa nani? Haiwezi kuwa sio mtoto wa nani? Wako. Haiwezi kuwa mtumwa. Haiwezi kuwa mtumwa. Haiwezi kuwa mfanyikazi. Hata kana kwamba anakukosea namna gani? Na umeandika wafanyikazi pale. Uwezi kusema huyu mtoto wangu kabisa sio mtoto wangu. Sasa mfanyikazi ndio mtoto wako. Hapana. Huyu mtoto hako na shida lakini bado ni mtoto wako. Sasawa, we often forget the duty of children but God does not forget the mercy of a father. Sisi tunaeza sahau hata watoto wetu hata saa zikini nakuta mtu hata metupiria mbali mtoto yake kwa sababu hame ukazirisha lakini ukweli ni kwamba God cannot forget his child or his children. He cannot forget. Naona hapo nikana kwamba nataka kukusema sunana au watoto wa Mungu wananunulika. Tuchukue mfano ya mfanyikazi na mtoto na mwajiri. Mwajiri. Mwajiri analipa mfanyikazi msara. Mhm. Mtoto akiwa anafanya nini? Anaangalia. Ni kweli? Mtoto hakuna kitu anafanya nini? Anafaidika. Anafaidika nayo. Mm-hmm. Lakini huyu mtoto anafika mahali anamnunuka kwa nini? Mzazi wangu analipa huyu mfanyikazi pesa na mimi ingali niko hapa na zile hakuna kitu anafanya nini? Anafaidika. Anafaidika. Mm-hmm. Huyu mtoto ajue ikana ya kwamba huyu mzazi kuna kitu amemwekea ambacho kitakuja kukuwa ni cha chake. Chake. Ama ile kazi huyu anafanya yeye ndiye atarithi ile yote yeye anatengeneza huyu ndiye anafanya nini atakuja kuhisi that, that is it hapo ndio watu haelewi and that one we can get it in Galatians 4 inasema lakini nasema ya kuwa mridhi wakati wowote awapo mtoto hana tofauti na mtumwa ingawa ni bwana wa yote Bili? Ba, bari yu chini ya bari yu chini ya wakili na watunzaji hata wakati uliokwisha kuamuriwa na baba that is it paul here is talking of a child of god that means in this world we are or the children of god they are worse even than the servant the servant are the rulers of this world those people they are the servant of god working for the children of god meaning in this world 
the worldly people get a lot of wealth. They have ways of getting wealth. But you'll find that a child of God has nothing. But there is a point in time when this child of God will be the heir of everything. There's a coming a time when a child of God will be the heir of everything. But this wicked person who is a ruler today is a governor. All his work, all his reward, all his payment is being paid now. That's why he will have a lot of things in this world. But the child of God will have nothing. Niko sababu huyu ambaye ni mfanyikazi yeye mshahara wake ni malipo wapi hapa duniani. Lakini mrithi ambaye ni mtoto atarithi atakuja kurithi ufalme wa Mungu. Kwa hivyo hata kana kwamba hajapata anything. Ni kusema mfanyikazi akiandikwa mtoto akiwa mdogo namna hii mfanyikazi analipwa mshahara na hako na nguvu nyingi hata anachapa huyo mtoto huyo mtoto hana any authority above the servant ambaye ameandikwa amule but huyo servant atatoka na mshahara yenye amelipwa lakini the child ile mali yote ilikuwa hiyo mama ama hiyo mzee ni huyo mtoto hivyo ndivyo Mungu anasema kwa hivyo tujue wakati Mungu anaongea haya mambo tujue in this world kuna wale wanatii Mungu ni watoto wa Mungu na wako na ni wengi hapa duniani na kuna wale hata hii neno wakivundishwa namna gani hawezi kuipenda wale wanapenda neno na Mungu we call them the elect of god niko sababu wao wanasikia sauti ya Mungu wakati wa wote na hata kana kwamba hawaangaliwi wanafanya yale Mungu anafanya nini yanamfurahisha hawezi kufanya kama watu wa mwili niko sababu wao ni watoto wa Mungu ningetaka tusome Luke 15:18 inasema namna gani inasema Nitaondoka nitakwenda kwa baba yangu na kumwambia baba nimekosa juu ya mbingu na mbele yako. Uh -huh. I will rise and go to my father and I'll say unto him father I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants. Sio kama tunaelewana pale. Huyu ni the prodigal son. The prodigal son, you remember alikuwa he asked for all his money or his whatever his father had to give him. And he went in a far country. A far country ni kusema he went far from God alienda mbali sana na Mungu ni kwa sababu yeye wakati anasema apatiwe kile kitu ambaye ni yake ni kumaanisha everything that a man has we have brain we have reasoning we have understanding we have legs we have hands all what we have there is our stock and this talk we are given by our father but whatever we have starting from our reason and understanding we can either use them to serve our father or we can use them to serve ourselves ourselves so the prodigal son decided the best way in this world is is to go far from god and use all what God has given him for his own enjoyment pleasure kila kitu ambaye anataka kufanya na huu mwili afanye naye but when he went akajikuta akifikiria anaenda kupata raha 
kwa bahati mzuri yaani akajikuta anakula na nini na nguruwe nguruwe ni kumaanisha nini nguruwe ni kumaanisha ni wale watu ambaye wa mwili ambaye wanafikiria mambo ya nini ya mwili ya mwili they are just like animals they just live in this world to enjoy themselves hiyo tu ndio wanapenda so the prodigal son wakati alienda akajikuta hata yeye ameingia ameandikwa na nani na mfalme wa hii dunia wa hii nini alisha nguruwe zake but yeye ambaye sasa tunapatiwa an example of a prodigal son ambaye yeye alikuwa mtoto wa nani wa Mungu he had the sense of god yeye in himself there was a seed of god akiwa analisha nguruwe akaona hapana afadhali nifanye nini nirudi kwa baba nirudi kwa baba maana ke alilia rais in this world hakuna kitu ambaye ni ya maana wakati alijielewa wakati ali, yeah wakati alijielewa that means there is a time a child of god wanga anafika hata mm. ukijaribu kuwa na raha hii dunia unaona hakuna nini hakuna raha hakuna raha unashindwa ni ya nini ukinywa hata hiyo pombe ukiamka asubuhi wakati watu wengine tena wana raha wewe kazi yako ni kufanya nini it is to regret Unakuta saa zingine hata una, unataka kuacha a certain habit. Lakini unashi, unashindwa ni kwa sababu of your infirmities. But still hata ukishindwa unaona kabisa kabisa mimi si stahili kuwa namna gani? Namna hii. There is something I want to be a good person. I want to serve the Lord. Sasa hiyo mambo inaanza kukusumbua. So this prodigal son wakati alijiona kabisa yeye kazi yake ameandikwa na mfalme wa hii dunia ambaye mfalme wa hii dunia ni nani? Shetani. Ni shetani. Shetani ndiye anamtawala. Yeye ndiye anatawala his faculties, his understanding, his reasoning, his sensual pleasure is under the power of Satan. Kwa hivyo hakuna kitu kizuri anaweza fanya. Na the best thing he can do ni kufanya, ni kufanya kazi ambaye still inasabu watu wengine ambaye wameshikwa na nani na shetani sasa hapo ndio alilia rais akasema i will arise and go to my father he want to go back that is what we call repent repentance that is repentance ameona dhambi ameona makosa ameona and true repentance niliwaambia it must be engineered by the holy spirit of god meaning umeona dha na umeona dhambi otherwise we have false repentance this false repentance ni hii unaenda it's because you fear there is something coming or you 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 hear the christians they are they are going somewhere so you want to join them and to be with them so when you go there wewe your hope is going to heaven ni kama vile tuliona Balaam hata akiwa mchawi alisema akufe kivu nani ya wenye haki lakini yeye mwenyewe hataki kufanya nini kufanya haki but he admired the children of Israel akaona hawa ni watu ambaye ni watu wenye haki na even have tried to cast them and you cannot ca- cast them paka akasema wale mugu wamebariki You cannot do what? You cannot cast them. Yeye yeah, mwenyewe akaona. You cannot cast them. Ni hivyo. Kwa hivyo naye huyu ambaye anaona huyu prodigal son aliweza ku realize is the only the child of God ambaye aliona dhambi na akaona kabisa kabisa I must go to my father. Kwa hivyo he to arise it is to repent. To repent. Na akasema I have sinned. Nasikia hapa. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. You see kuna kitu watu hawajui. That yule ambaye ni mwana wa Mungu ama ni mtoto wa Mungu yeye uanga hajigambi. Hajipigi kifu kifua. 
haoni kana kwamba ametosha hawezi kusikia sauti yake huko makanisa akisema vile yeye ati ni mtoto wa Mungu ama yeye ni mhubiri sio kama tunaelewana because the moment a child of god rises the sinfulness of sin yeye ile kitu wanga inaingia ndani yake ni humility humility ni kusema yeye kabisa kabisa anaona hata mbele ya, ya Mungu hataki kuita mtoto wa nani anaona afanye nini hatoshi lakini ukiona hawa watu wanazunguka hapa duniani wakisema at the man of god wakiwa kabisa wana, wanataka watu wote wajue hao ni watoto wa Mungu hao hawamjui nani hawajui Mungu hata hawajajua dhambi nini mtoto wa Mungu always anaona hakuna wakati yeye uwanga ametosha na ndio nasikia huyu prodigal sana anasema yaani nini anasema sistahili kufanya nini kuitwa kuitwa mtoto wako afadhali yaani niwe one of your ha- yaani uniringanishe niwe mimi kama ni nani ni mtumwa because naona kabisa nimekosea nimekosa hata zitahiri that is a child of god yeye saa yote uwanga anaugua kwa sababu ya dhambi saa yote hata kana kwamba amefika kiwango gani anaona kabisa hakuna kitu mbele ya Mwenyezi Mungu yeye ni mmoja and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him akaamka sasa ameona dha he want to repent people don't know that if you have true repentance in yourself if kabisa kabisa umeona dhambi hata kama watu wengine hawaja notice Mungu anga mfanya nini amekuona amekuona na amejua huyu kwa kweli yeye ameona dhambi na kwa kweli anataka kurudi kwangu na ndio unaona and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off yani kusema hata hakuwa amekaribia hata yani hata kana kwamba hajielewi kabisa ako namna gani ni kusema that seed in you that true seed in you wakati imeanza kuchibuka wakati kabisa umeanza eh, 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 imeanza kukua ama umeanza kuone, kabisa ku feel that you are sinner Mungu anakuona na kabisa anaona that is my child so wengi ni wenye uanga wanafanya repentance ambaye kwa kweli it is not a repentance Mungu anaona kabisa wewe ni mchezo na ndio tunaambiwa in salvation you do yourself what we call introspection ni kwa sababu mimi unaweza kundanganya lakini wewe usidanganya nani Mungu This is not this is a matter of life and death and death. Hapa sio mchezo. Na ndio unaona watu wengine wamechukua salvation ni kama mchezo. They think that you are you are you can cheat God. Hawezi. Yeye kama ukweli you have true repentance, yeye anajua. Kama kabisa umeona dhambi zako, kama kabisa unataka to be a child of God, to deny yourself to yani to live a righteous life Mungu anaona na anaona kabisa huyu he want to be one of my child and from that moment atakufanya nini he is going to strengthen you he'll work with you and he'll work for you na yale yote ulikuwa unaona kama ni shida ataiondoa kwa hivyo hapa yeye akiwa mbali sana his father saw him and had compassion had compassion wakati ameona aka akabisa akaona huyu mtoto the prodigal son kabisa ameona dhambi zake he had compassion akaona kabisa huruma zikamuingia that's the father na akafanya nini akaenda akamkumbatia it is just the same way sisi uanga tunaishi na, na watoto wetu If you have a rob yani child kuna njia anaweza kuja kwako kabisa uone huyu ameona dhambi zake 
na kabisa kweli yale anaongea ni ukweli and as a father hautafanya nini hauta yani hautamrudisha ama ukatae utamwambia kama umeona hiyo karibu mtoto wangu and then from that point mtaendelea safari kwa hivyo na yeye Mungu aliona and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him ana kiss nani mtoto ya huyo ni Mungu that means wakati Mungu amekiss wewe ni kusema amekukubali that's what we call true repentance so a father will not be severe to a returning prodigal as god is not to yani, as god is not to penitent sinners hata Mungu penitent sinner ni wale ambao wanasimama katika yani katika true repentance sasawa kwa hivyo lazima tuone ni kwa sababu if we go back to the covenant or we look at the covenant of god and his children you will see that whenever you become a child of god you will enter into a covenant and this covenant is very important because if you look at the children of israel they were under the god's covenant but when you come to the heathen they were children of god but they were not under the cup under the cup these are different unajua kuna watu usema kwani kuna watoto wa Mungu na wengine si wa Mungu wewe utauliza hivyo lakini ukweli ni kwamba God has a covenant with his children now whenever God has a covenant with his children if you you enter into that covenant ni kusema from that moment God is going to take you in a special way than that somebody who has not entered into this covenant and that's why we have the old testament covenant and when you come to this generation we have the new testament abai is a ka a covenant you kusema whenever you have a true repentance you enter into a covenant with who with god you kusema you have become a child of god and when you have become a child of god that means is as if you have a vow you have made a vow that whatever god want me to do i will do because now i have entered into a covenant with god what about if you fail to do what god has what god god's covenants has has for you let us see in deuteronomy 21 18 20, to 21 ah, soma inasema mtu akiwa na mwana mkaidi mshupavu asiji asijiti asiyeti sauti ya baba yake wala sauti ya mama yake na wajapo mwadhibu awasikilizi ndipo babaye na mamaye na wamkamate na kumpeleka kwa wazee wa mji wake katika lango la mahali pake wawaambie wazee wa mji wake huyu mwana wetu ni mkaidi msumbuvu hasikizi sauti yetu ni mwasherati tena ni mlevi waume wote wa mji wake na wamtupie mawe afe ndivyo atakavyo ondoa uovu katika katikati yako na Israeli wote watasikia na kuogopa you see now this you know sometimes the law of god sometimes people don't believe them but this were the law which were in that covenant people because the children of israel they were under the covenant of god and god was teaching teaching them and teaching us through them what a covenant is 
Because here God is saying, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son that will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and when they have chastened him, will not hearken to them, then shall his father and mother lay hold on him and bring him out or out unto the elders of, the, of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is glutton and drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with his stone that he shall die. That, that's what was happening in that covenant. Mutoto ni wako. Lakini nafanya nini? Umejaribu hati sasa huyo mtoto ilikuwa ni mtu wa kufanya nini? You know here God is teaching us what happens when wewe in the New Testament you enter into the New Testament covenant. That means you have taken Jesus Christ to be your to be your Lord. Lakini hapa wewe ukiwa mtu wa kanisa unakuta you don't obey that covenant. You do all things that you feel they are good. But when you go to the church you want to tell people that you are a child of God. Yesu ni nani? Ni Bwana. You are drunkard, you are whatever. You are a thief. You, you know, here we are taking just these outward things, but here it means a lot. Nikumaanisha if when you enter into this covenant, who is your father? God. Meaning hapa Mungu anataka kusema if kabisa kabisa you are not going to obey the law kama hutakuja ku obey the law of god na wewe mimi am your father that means the end result of you is what is death nikubalisha wewe you are not kwa nini hawa wazazi walikuwa obligation huyu mtoto na ilikuwa hivyo walikuwa wanapeleka watoto wao wanakuwa stoned to death wakiangalia It was an order. It was the law of Moses. Because God was teaching, he wanted to teach higher spiritual truth of what it means to be a child of God. Kwa hivyo nikumaanisha you can enter into a covenant kama vile walikuwa wewe you have a covenant with your children hawa ni watoto wa nani wangu. Lakini kama watakataa kwenda kulingana na vile nataikana you stone them. Which means even God himself If you happen to join this covenant. Now when we talk about this covenant, we mean this New Testament covenant. Na ukataa kulingana kuenda kulingana vile Mungu anataka, ni kumaanisha what is what is what is what is awaiting you is eternal death. Hakuna kitu kingine. Sasawa. So here this child one thing. This stubborn child that will never change until he is stoned that means when you come to any covenant nikumaanisha huyu ambaye the father is going to yani he cannot hear can to his father he is not a child of god yeye ameingia pale kimako kimakosa amejiunga na watoto wa Mungu the children of covenant lakini yeye he does not belong there ni kwa sababu neno la Mungu linasema namna gani? A child of God does not sin. Ndoto Mungu afanye nini? Hatendi dhambi. That means haimaanishi wewe ukiwa mtoto wa Mungu hawezi tenda dhambi. Nikumaanisha hatendi dhambi. Ni kwa sababu yeye hawezi by his own power aende kutenda dhambi. Ni kwa sababu the seed of God remaineth in him. In him hata kana kwamba anatenda dhambi yeye anaweza kuitenda lakini itamsumbua mpaka kuja fanya nini atubu lakini ukiona mtu ambaye anatenda dhambi anairudia na hakuna kitu anasikia huyo watena na yeye 
Yeye sio mtoto wa Mungu. Kwa hivyo mtoto wa Mungu hatendi dhambi. Sasa hapa tutataka kuambiwa huyu mtoto ambaye alikuwa stoned pale, why was he stoned? Ukisoma utasikia wazazi walikuwa wamemjaribu jia zo, zote. Akakosa kutibu, kama yani kutubu. Nikumaanisha kama angekuwa na mbegu ya kutii ile njia ukiona msazi akimpeleka apigwe au awe ni kumaanisha hata yeye msazi amefanya nini amechoka na ameona kabisa this child of mine afadhali hata awe kuliko awe hai ni kwa sababu he is going to be a nuisance lakini kama angekuwa na begu ya kutii ingefika pahali afanya nini abadilike aone dhambi zake naishi kama mtoto ambaye nikana kwamba ni infirmities of youth ilikuwa inamsumbua na arudi into the right place. Kwa hivyo hapa ndio sasa Mungu anasema wale ambaye ni watoto wake hata kana kwamba kuna shida gani. Sasa hapa ndio tunataka tuone why he is spare them. Ni kwa sababu wale ambaye kwa kweli they are in the covenant hata kana kwamba the sins of infirmity inawasumbua lakini mbegu ya Mungu ikiwa ndani yake wao kabisa kabisa Mungu atawaspare hawata hawatakufa wao watasimama because they are prodigal sons hao watarudi ni kwa sababu ni watoto wa Mungu so so here we are going to see why god sparing how sorry god sparing his children not with study their manifold infirmities is one of the choice privilege of them that fear him hiyo privilege moja ya juu sana kwa wale watu wanaogopa Mungu that kwa kweli you are not perfect but god will spare you ni kwa sababu wewe you are a, a child of god and in his covenant Sasawa. So here the first thing that we should ask ourselves what is it to spare how god how does he spare them how does he spare them so he spare them when he come to accept them and when he come to afflict them that is two things God spares his children one when he accepts them no matter what and when he afflict them because even affliction in another in another way is a blessing in this guys you come to know one apart so those are the two way in accepting their imperfect services and not correct them at all or correcting them in measure and in mercy you see god accept us his children in whatever situation we are in sisi si wasafi lakini mungu anaweza kukubali wewe na unakaa wewe ni mtoto wa mungu lakini wewe bado you are walking darkness unagiza mingi sana lakini Mungu anakuaccept vile uko unakuta kabisa kabisa he spare you just the way you are na wewe bado unatenda dhambi kama watu wengine god can accept you because you are a covenant child na wewe mtoto wa Mungu na kitu anaangalia there is his seed in you lakini the situation you are in kwa sababu ya infirmities unakuta uko na pika pika kama watu wengine na God spares you the way you are and sometimes he can correct you in measure and in mercy yeye anaweza correct you kulingana vile anaona anaweza kukusaidia but his correction is because of mercy because he is a merciful god sasawa nikataka tusome joel joel 2:17 ibusoma inasema 
hao makuhani wa hudumu wa Bwana na walie kati ya patakatifu na madhabahu na waseme waachilie watu wako e Bwana wala usi usi utoe urithi wako upate aibu hata mataifa watawale juu yao kwani waseme kati ya watu yuko wapi Mungu wao See now let the priest the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say spare thy people O Lord and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them wherefore should they say among people who is their god so this is a prayer ambaye the priest of the church wanaambiwa wamuombe Mungu as spare his children hata kana kwamba ni wenye dhambi wasije wale ambaye watu wamewashika wame mateka wakawadharau wakiwauliza ako hapi yule huyo Mungu wenu ambaye mnasema so is a prayer of the children of god of god to god himself that you pray that god should spare you hata kana kwamba nyinyi ni wenye dhambi but god can spare watoto wake wasije wakaumia na wengine mpaka watu wanasema kwani hawa watu wanaonekana ni waombaji sana ama wanapenda Mungu sana mbona wanaumia na watu wengine kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha god can spare his children wakati watu wengine wanaumia ama wakati, wakati eh, watu wako kwa shida Mungu huangalia watoto wake so sometimes as moderating when he does not stir up all his wrath as it is sweet to find mercy remembered in wrath and that he will moderate the judgment to us and make it more sufferable mungu he can moderate the afflictions kwa watoto wake to moderate kumaanisha nini yeye anaweza kukuangalia na jicho ingine wakati wa shida wengine wakiumia god can moderate shida kwako uwe wewe haumi sana one thing he can strengthen your heart uwe hata kana kwamba unapitia yale unapitia kwako hiyo mambo sio mazito kama wale wengine that's how god spare his children sasa so if you read Ezra 9:13 inasema namna gani na baada ya hayo na baada ya hayo yote yaliyo tupata kwa sababu ya matendo yetu mabaya na kwa sababu ya hatia yetu iliyo kuu ikiwa wewe Mungu wetu huku tuadhibu kama tulivyostahili kwa maovu yetu tena umetupa mabaki unasikia and after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass seeing that thou our god has punished us less than our iniquities deserve and has given us deliverance as this hawa ni watoto wa mungu ambaye kwa kweli wakati shida ilitokea wow they deserved to be punished kama watu wengine lakini Mungu akawapata kitu akawapata kitu naita yeye aliwapunish less than their iniquities ambao walikuwa wanaistahili sasa hapo wanafurahi and has given us deliverance as this so a child of god when you stand in the covenant na ufanye kulingana na mapenzi ya Mungu there is a deliverance that can be given unto you when others are going through calamities ambaye ziko na uchungu mwingi sana how god can do it we cannot speculate that is in god himself 
He know how he can do it. And because problem are not equal, sasa hapo inategemea the situation you are in. That God can lessen that situation for your benefit because you are a child of God. Sasa. Uh, another at other times sparing is spoken of with respect to a duty to be accepted we need not be spared in our best actions they being a defective and defiled god has given us a duty to do kila moja kuna kasi mungu amekupatia lakini utakuja kuona nobody can do his duty unto perfection and because nobody can do the duty unto perfection god will always spare us because of our infirmities nikumaanisha he will accept our due our duties sisi kama tunarewana pale that mimi naweza kuwa sasa mimi nafundisha and in fact I have a lot of infirmities. This is a duty God has given me. There is a lot of failings ambayo sasa zingine mimi sifanyi nini? Sizielewi. I'm failing in many things. Sasa hapo ndio Mungu anasema he will always spare you because you are you are yani you are a nathly man. Wewe ni mtu hapa wa 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 wa, wa mavumbi. Na you cannot be perfect. Sasa hapo Mungu ata spare you ni kwa sababu unajaribu because god what god look at his children not the uh, not the work that you do yeye yeah, angalia ile kazi unafanya ndio hiyo kazi ataangalia lakini anaangalia what we call sincerity are you sincere hiyo ndio qualification ya mtoto wa Mungu there are many people who are doing many duties lakini they are not sincere they are doing it because of some other yani interest but a child of god mungu anaangalia the sincerity of that person kwa hivyo hata kana kwamba there is going to be infirmities kuna mambo mengi sana itashindikana ama itakushinda na uifanye yani kulingana vile ataikana god will always always spare you what you cannot do na hiyo tunaweza kuipata katika nehemaya Uh, 1322 Nehemiah 1322 Kisha nikawaamuru walawe wajie takase na waje kuyalinda malango ili kuitakasa siku ya sabato Unikumbu unikumbukie haya nayo e Mungu wangu ukaniachilie sawa sawa na wingi wa rehema zako You see this this is nehemiah nehemiah was given the duty of rebuilding the temple after the children of god came out of captivity so here as a man he has appointed uh, yani many things unto the levites But even after doing all this he is crying unto God remember me oh my god concerning this also and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy why is he saying that and yet he was doing great work of building the temple of god he knew Nehemiah knew that he is doing it but He cannot be perfect. There were many failing in between and that's why he is crying unto God to spare him because he is a human being. So God can spare you uh, in respect to the duty that has given that he has earned, that you are undertaking in this world. So he here he speak this when he had procured God holy ordinance to be daily observed he pleaded not merit before god but desired rather to be spared and forgiven for he was conscious to his own many failings that was nehemiah 
Sasao. So God spare when he forgiveth our sins and pardoneth the manifold imperfections of our services. God will always spare and forgive us because of our infirmity or because of our sins. Sisi ni watu wenye dhambi. Sisi ni watu tumeitwa na Mungu. Kutoka tumechimbwa the same quarry ambayo watu wengine wako. Our parents, our our brothers, our sisters, our friends. They are they all surround us. Na hata kana kwamba tunataka kufanya kazi ya Mungu, we can fail because of them. Sasa hapo ndio tunaambiwa God can spare you because of your surroundings. The only thing anataka kwako ni sincere sincerity. Anajua wewe hawezi kufanya mambo in perfection kama Mungu. No, he knows. He knows our weakness. So those are the things that as a children of God we are supposed to be proud of that God can spare us when we fail in many things. Sasawa. So this is only accomplished when we consider the holy nature of God and also when we consider the strictness and purity of his law both as to the precept and sanction you know you as a child of god you see you cannot do things unto perfection kwa hivyo when you consider the holiness of god and yet he can spare you that is supposed to make you joyful that god is a merciful god because wewe unajua you can never by your own power you can never be holy like him but he's going to spare you until he'll make you perfect also if you consider the strictness of his law that means when you come to the law the law of god is always the law of god if you don't do things in the right way that means you abrogate the law of god that law will demand satisfaction and satisfaction it means you must be punished sinikweli but you can imagine because you are a child of god in the covenant that means even that law though it demands punishment unto you god is going to spare you in one way or another sasawa eh uh, all these things must be considered because usually men heal their wounds slightly and afterwards they fester into a more dangerous soul and again we are not af- and again we are not affected with God's pardoning mercy because we do not see with what difficulty it is brought about that means sisi binadamu why do we not see the mercy of God kwa nini binadamu haoni how how much we are spared by God hiyo ndio shida moja that binadamu haelewi hata wakati anasema God is a merciful God sometimes he doesn't understand he just talk those words just like a parrot yeah sometimes anasema hivyo because wengine wanasema lakini hajui how merciful God is but when you are a child of God you need to understand this thing to to understand that why it not because of the mercy of God all of us would have been consumed and if you know the purity of the law of god that's the only thing that can make you understand how god is merciful if you know the holy nature of god that's the only time you can know that god is merciful, is merciful. because we do many things against the will of god let us read joshua 24 19 what does it say maybe you can get some point there 
Soma. Nasema. Yosho akawaambia watu, hamwezi kumtumikia Bwana kwa kuwa yeye ni Mungu mtakatifu, yeye ni Mungu mwenye wivu hata wasamehe makosa yenu wala dhambi zenu. Yeah, you see now. And Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord. For he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression nor your sins. You see here, these were the children of God. They were in covenant with God. But when you ask a man by his own power, atasema mimi I'm serving God. And whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it because God will see that I'm doing it because he has said us and he has shown us the way how to worship. But here Joshua is telling them you cannot serve the Lord. Hamwezi. Nikusema even if we come to the church even if we are yeah, we are born again Christians. Tuseme sisi tumekuwa ni wa Kristo. But whatever we do, we cannot serve the Lord. We cannot. Kwa sababu God is a holy God. Na wengine hata wakati wanaenda atukusema ni kuipia Mungu, unakuta wengine hata tamaa zao ziko mbali sana na Mungu. Wengine wanasema ni kumuibia Mungu. Na unanga wengine hata mwingine anakaa kama anataka kukatika mwili aonekane mwili yake. Lakini anasafu nani? Anasema ana, anamuibia nani? Anamuibia Mungu. We cannot. Hivyo ndio binadamu hajui. It's only that God because of his mercy he is spared us. Anaona our infirmity, anaona ujinga yetu, anaona kabisa vile tunaenda hapa hapa duniani ati tunaenda kanisani tunaenda kuabudu yeye. But we cannot do it. Kwa sababu gani? Any minute wewe unaweza kuwa hata akili yako haiko pale. Na ndio unaona ishini nasema if you forsake the Lord and serve strange god then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he has done you good. After that he has done you good. And you cannot do it. Kwa sababu wakati muta serve other god Mungu atafanya nini? Atawaangamiza. Na tunaona kabisa hawa watu wali wa, yani end time walikuwa unakuta they were going a holy after other gods. Tena Mungu anawa punish anawarudisha wajue jia zao. Kwa hivyo there is no one time man in this world can serve God. Wanake wakati nafikiria amefanya vizuri sana unakuta labda wakati huo yeye he is serving himself. Akisema ni Mungu anasaa na ni yeye mwenyewe anajisaa. So the massiveness of God it can only come to your mind wakati utaelewa ati hata wewe kabisa even this kingdom of God utaingia not because of your work it is because of his ma- mercy. Tunaroa na pale. It is because of his mercy ndio utaenda that's that that's how you will enter into that kingdom meaning god will spare you he will spare your infirmities hata kana kwamba wewe uko namna gani aseme hapana huyu hata kana kabisa alikuwa na jaribu he had a seed of god he was sincere only mwili ndio ilikuwa inashinda yeye god will spare you but you cannot serve god useme wewe umetosha utaingia and that's why tunaambiwa there is nobody ambaye ataingia ufalme wa mbinguni is because at yani ambaye hataingishwa na nani na Yesu Kristo Christ the wisdom of God and this Christ must be born in you ambaye yeye he is the only the hope of glory tutakuja kuona kwa undani tuone how is it to be born again how Christ is born in somebody because what Let me tell you. People have forgotten. They don't even know. Hawajui 
Yesu Kristo anazaliwa namna gani? They have never known. Leave hata wanyi wanafundishwa hata mapasta wenye wanafundisha wengi hapa duniani wanafundisha watu. They don't know. They are misleading people kwa sababu wao wanakuja pale wanafikiria kabisa huyu mtu anaelewa hata yeye hajielewi. Wakati utakuja kuingia kwa undani ndio utakuja kuona hata utashangaa. Watu hawajui. But God willing tutakuja kuona haya mambo kwa undani vizuri. Muone mtoto wa Mungu how he knows himself. That is a child of God. Na tuone salvation ni nini? Kwa sababu watu hawajui what salvation is. So this Joshua speak not to discourage them but that they might not have slight thoughts of God and his service. Joshua hakuwa anawaambia ndio a discourage wao wakati anawaambia you cannot serve God. Hapana. Alikuwa anataka wajue that to serve God you should not serve God slightly ufikirie wewe kabisa sasa uko sawa no lazima if he would be put off with anything and would slightly and he said pardon their errors wasifikirie yeye atakuwa easily deceived by your own ways of doing it sasa mnafanya vile mnataka hapana you cannot serve god Mwezi kuabudu Mungu nyinyi na nguvu zenu vile mnafikiria. Is a jealous God and is a holy God. Kwa hivyo msichukue hii mambo ya salvation msichukue easily ndio alikuwa anataka kuambia. Msione kana kwamba it is an, as easy as you think. God is a, go, a holy God na yeye he yeye wanga haangalii nje. Adivino nafanya outward anaangalia wapi? Ndani. So ukisoma eh Habakkuk 1:13 inasema namna gani? Soma. Wewe ulia na macho safi hata usiweze kuangalia uovu. Wewe usiyeweza kutazama ukaidi. Mbona unawaangalia watendao kwa ila na kunyamaza kimya hapo mtu muovu amezapo mtu aliye mwenye haki kuliko yeye. Si nao hapa ni hapa kuku. Hapa kuku had a tendency ya kutetesha Mungu. Anasema thou out of pure eyes than to behold evil. And cannot look on iniquity. Mungu wezi angalia haya mambo. Wherefore look at thou upon them that deal treacherously and holdeth thy tongue when the wicked defile the man that is more righteous than he so hapa sasa nayo hapa kwa anashindwa kwa nini inafika pahali wale ambaye ni watoto wa Mungu wewe Mungu unakubali waumuizwe na wale ambaye si watoto wa nani na mimi najua wewe uwezi kubali kuangalia nini dhambi Wez, your eyes are purer than to yani uh, than to look evil or to behold evil and yet unakubali yule ambaye ni mwenye dhambi aumiza huyu mwingine so this is another point where wakati eh, god want to spare you you know salvation with the gospel of our lord inatakiwa watu ione kwa njia zote tumeona god can spare you through affliction affliction sasa and this affliction atatumia mwenye, the wicked person kukumi kukumiza sasa hapa kuku hapo kuelewa mbona basi unakubali the right yani the wicked aumiza the, the, the righteous na wewe kabisa unasema wewe kabisa you have pure eyes than to behold evil kwa nini unakubali that evil ifanya nini itendeke so that was the question ambaye eh, hapa kuku alikuwa anauliza mimi hata yeye haku wamepata haku wamepaulanuka kabisa aelewe what salvation is because even affliction tumeona badu ni nini is part of sparing manake tuliona wale ambaye Mungu hapendi afanye nini hawarudi kwa hivyo kurudiwa it, is, it means you are being spared sasa eh kurudiwa you are being spared 
Ebu tusome first Samuel first Samuel 620. Ebu soma. Inasema. Nao watu wa Bet Semeshi wakasema. Ni nani awezaye kusimama mbele za Bwana huyu Mungu mtakatifu? Naye atapanda kwenda kwa nani kutoka kwetu. Kuzi and the men of Beth Shemesh said who is able to stand before this holy Lord God and to whom shall he go up from us so to stand before God is not easy as we think all this is mentioned to show that God does not make little reckoning of sin and that and that which lesson the benefit of pardon in our thought is usually some a basing of the nature of god ina tufundisha nini that god is a holy god na akiwa a holy god yeye wanga hata dhambi kidogo namna gani anafanya nini anaiona kwa hivyo nakumaanisha yeye anaona the smallest sin that yetu mwenyewe huwezi fanya nini huwezi ona na hii inatufundisha ndio tuone that how much god yeye wanga anarudi chini because of our self because of our salvation inatuonesha vile mungu wanga kabisa kabisa ana spare us ndio tuweze kupata that salvation which he has given us in Christ Jesus our lord bure akiangalia sisi wote kabisa kabisa hakuna moja anaweza kusema ako sawa sisi wote ni wenye dhambi wenye dhambi na hata ile kidogo sana Mungu anaiona hata ile sisi waka tunajaribu kuificha from ourselves unajua kuna dhambi binadamu wanga hiyo hataki watu waione anajifichia ye mwenyewe na hiyo dhambi inakaanga pale in the heart of someone na hii dhambi ukitaka kuijua wewe kosea huyo mtu wanga inachipuka tu unaiona hiyo dhambi iko na hiyo binadamu wanga nakataa naye so long as hauigi line yake hautafanya nini hautaiona so long as wewe haukanyagi yeye yeye kabisa hiyo dhambi utaiona na hiyo anaificha sasa hapa ndio tunaambiwa we can be a good worshiper lakini Mungu hata hiyo dhambi anafanya nini anaiona kwa hivyo yeye is only that he is going to spare you anaiona lakini ana spare nani ana kuspare because wewe you are a covenant a child of the covenant because to be a child of covenant covenant ni kumaanisha Christ yeye anakusimami anakusimamia Meaning in you akikuangalia hiyo dhambi ni kwa sababu you are in the covenant yeye anaona nani anaona haki ya Kristo kwa hivyo ana spare wewe kwa hivyo hakuna kitu tunaweza kusema ati o oh, sisi ni wazuri hapana sio sio hivyo kwa hivyo tuangalie haya mambo kwa uzito tuione kwa nini Mungu anasema anasema I'll spare them ndio ni wenye wanafanya kama watu wengine lakini i will spare them ebu soma psalms 50 21 inasema namna gani psalms 50 21 soma inasema <laughs> ndivyo ulivyo ndivyo ulivyofanya nami nikanyamaza ukadhani ya kuwa mimi ni kama wewe wala haki nitakukemea You see these things has thou done and I kept silence thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself Nikumaanisha atapo tuta kuambiwa binadamu yeye anafanya mambo mpaka anajipatia confidence haya mambo ni mazuri 
na naona hiyo ndiyo njia lakini anasahau Mungu ni kwa sababu amenyamaza unafikiri sasa wewe mko sasa yani mko pamoja na nani mko pamoja mko na mnaendeshana na yeye sana and that's why you see many people swearing hata yeye anafanya dhambi lakini anataka kuswea ati vile yako sawa live on that and I drag the name of god our his witness ati yako nini ako sawa yes a christian when you want to share with the name of god a true christian he never swear in vain if true yale unasimama naye ni ukweli and you take god to be your witness god truly is going to be your witness na hapo hakuna shida because wewe unasimama na ukweli and you have taken god ume yani asimame na wewe god will stand with you lakini wewe ukiwa kabisa kabisa unafanya mambo yako with your own mind without understanding deeper truth unakuta wewe unafikiri mko pamoja na Mungu unafanya mambo unaona kana kwamba Mungu anaikubali lakini wewe hauendi ndani kidogo uone unajua kuna watu wanaangalia dhambi ina a superficial manner when you say superficial manner ni kuangalia kitu juu juu tu yeye through his own reasoning hata biblia unaona kuna watu wanaingia katika biblia hata atakutolea biblia do you support ye you know the word of god he ukichukua it can support even a thief tunaelewana the word of god he if kabisa kabisa you are going to go through it through your own reasoning unaweza kuta ina support mambo mengi sana sasa binadamu anaenda through the letter of the scripture anafikiria through his own interpretation that scripture ina support ye sasa hapo ndio Mungu anasema wewe unafikiria mimi ni kama wewe that wewe una reason out with terrestrial reasoning ambaye ni mambo ya mwili una reason naye hata haujaenda haya uende astro plane hata uende celestial plane uone mambo vile yako wewe bado uko na mwili na mafikiri, mafikiri hapa duniani and yet you reason out na unataka kuona ati unafikiri sasa wewe uko pamoja na Mungu hapana Mungu anataka kuambiwa God is a holy God He only spares us because we are his children we are in his covenant and the work of redemption is on his hand yeye mwenyewe ndiye anatufanya wapya yeye ndiye anatuosha and that's why he is going to spare us so long as we are sincere na wakati tumetenda dhambi tukiona dhambi zetu tukitubu he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins lakini sio kukataa let me tell you wengi hawataingia ufalme wa mbinguni why because they are controlled by their own reasoning reasoning yao ndio inawasukuma but a child of god he is driven by what we call faith faith is to believe on god on everything to know yale mungu amesema na na wewe mwenyewe unajiwachilia don't put your own reasoning reasoning is the worst enemy of salvation it is anti god it is anti christ nikisema hivi watu watasema kwani hatutakiwi ku reason reasoning ni mpiga kristo because whenever you reason out as a, yani ukiwa na yani when you are not enlightened by the spirit of god you yani you reason your reasoning is of self is going to be really driven by self nikumaanisha salt water is salt you cannot change it if you want to reason utakuta utakuwa unajizingira wewe mwenyewe self ita, utakuwa una reason out u, uji, ujifunike ndio naona watu wengi whenever you put your own reason unakuta wewe you are sinning kwa sababu 
you want to protect self and by nature hivyo ndivyo tuko self ukiona kabisa kabisa wewe that ukiambiwa neno la Mungu you want to put out your own reasoning to protect yourself watch out watch out that is not there is there is a problem that is not salvation you are in a problem reasoning cannot work that's why tunaambiwa we are saved by faith faith not of ourselves it is a gift from god kwa hivyo usipoelewa that uh, reasoning is always against the word of god many wanakaa na hiyo na ndio unaona watu wengi wanaleta mambo ya kusema mimi mimi sitakagi hivyo eh mtu akiguzwa pa kidogo unajua mimi aniletea na mimi sitakai kusikia mambo kama hayo those are evil words na mtu akisikia akisikia such a words zitatoka zitataka kutoka kwake uzikemee ati mimi the word mimi uyodoe mbali sana na wewe if you are child of god e mimi is the root of all sins hapo ndio dhambi yote inaanzia jaribu kukataa kwani mimi ni nani unajiuliza who am i at mimi sasa niseme mimi ukikumbuka that wewe ni mtu ambaye you are a sinner ambaye you need salvation ambaye you need the mercy of god to save you unaondoa hiyo mimi unasema let the will of god be done hata kana kwamba nimekosewa namna gani i'm not going to put in my word i'm not going to stand with my words to protect self apana hata self kitaka kujira namna gani kataa that is salvation hiyo ndio salvation ni kwa sababu wakati unakataa god is giving you the grace anakubadilisha lakini wakati unasimama na reasoning yako ni kumaanisha wewe you don't want salvation unasema kristo lakini unataka kupiga kristo tena because christ ile kitu ya kwanza anapanda ndani yetu it is humi, humility humility ni kunyenyekea na ndio anasema ukipigwa kofi pande ufanye nini upatia na nyingine so kama reasoning peke yake unakataa ku reason out you go down sasa ni kumaanisha if you go a little bit higher hata mtu akikupiga kofi utafanya nini utamrudishia hata yeye that's no salvation watoto wa Mungu tuelewe haya mambo manake tusipoelewa tutakuwa tunaenda tu tukisema tunaenda binguni kumbe tunaenda hell na tujui eh Psalms eh 19 12 Psalms 1912 Soma Yasema Ni nani awezaye kuyatambua makosa yake? Unitakase yes. na mambo ya asili. Yes, who can understand his errors? Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. This is David. Nani anaweza kujielewa? Nani anaweza kujua his errors? So the only thing a child of God can do is just to pray to God to be cleansed those secret faults ambaye ziko ndani yake ambaye anajificha ndani yake those faults. Manake wewe by nature you don't know you cannot know your errors. Haujui wewe ni wapi dhambi zimekaa kona gani. Wewe mwenyewe unakaa lakini wakati utaguzwa kidogo unajikuta kabisa umeinuka. So how imperfect is our obedience? How many times have we transgressed this holy law of God? Many failings we do we do not observe. And those which we do observe we are not able to to enumerate. Many failings. If we were to be judged by this by the law of God, the holiest and the humblest the most penitent and believing soul and the soul that most love loveth god cannot abide the trial kama ingekuwa if we were to be judged by the holy law of god 
the holiest yule ambaye anaonekana yeye yako sawa and the humblest na yule mwingine anaonekana penitent and bleeding soul na hata yule anaonekana anapenda Mungu sana cannot abide the trial and were it not for the, his promise through his son Jesus what could we look for but eternal ruin yule ambaye ni mzuri wale ambaye tunaona kabisa hapa wanajita the men of god in this world if they were to study the law of yani if they were to be judged by the law of god nobody can stand hakuna hata moja our hope is only his mercy in his son Christ Jesus that's the only hope we have it is not how 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 much we can do in this world sio vile sisi tunaweza fanya hapana hiyo sahau ile kitu Mungu anataka kuona ni sincerity are you sincere because if you are sincere kama vile tuliona the prodigal son hata ukiwa mbali sana hata ukiwa una shida kufanya that sincerity will make will take you to heaven that sincerity no matter how much infirmities uko nazo sincere hiyo ndio kitu ya kwanza are you sincere in yourself sasa tukimalizia nataka tusome psalms 130 verse 3 and 4 tuone inasema namna gani nasema bwana kama wewe ungehesabu maovu he bwana ni nani angesimama lakini kwako kuna msamaa ili wewe uwapoe you see if thou lord should is, shouldest mark iniquity o lord who shall stand but there is forgiveness with thee that thou may may be feared so to fear god ni kujua kuogopa kabisa ni kujua that there is forgiveness with god why because kama yeye angekuwa naangalia dhambi kama angekuwa naangalia dhambi zile tunatenda katika mioyo yetu nani angeokolewa hakuna hata moja hakuna hata moja we are all sinners ni sisi ni watu ambaye wana mafikira mabaya sana katika mioyo yetu but there is forgiveness with god na that is the how why we should fear him that mungu no matter how holy he is yeye anakusamehe si ndio he has forgiven us in his son jesus christ na sasa wewe if you know he has forgiven us in in his son jesus christ then you should fear him true fear wogope mungu but do men fear god no watu wa mogope mungu because if you fear god kumaanisha umemjua umejua umejua his holiness na umeona his mercifulness through his son umeelewa what he has done for us but watu wengi they don't know they don't fear god and that's why unaona every Tom and Dick akishukua biblia akisoma some part anasema yeye he is going to be a pastor amehitimili sasa he can be a teacher yani in the church of god that man doesn't fear god kama angekuwa na mgopa mungu hangeenda afungue mdomo yake aanze kuwaambia watu mtabarikiwa aanze kufundisha prosperity kama truly he fears the lord but yanafanya hivyo because he doesn't fear god lakini yule ambaye ni mtoto wa Mungu anaogopa hata kufungua ma, yani kuinua macho yake hivi bila mwezi Mungu anashindwa sasa kwa hivyo Mungu atusaidie tuweze kuelewa na tuweze kujua mambo eh, vile yanaenda na tuweze kujijua na tujue Mungu na tujue kabisa God is our God and we shall enter heaven because of his pairing us through his son Jesus Christ not because of our works sio kwa sababu tunajua kufanya kazi ya Mungu sana kuliko watu wengine ni upendo wake ulio ndani ya mtoto wake 
Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. Amen. Amen.